Hello, lovely folks of YouTube, Ren here. So a um, little off the beaten path here. I'm in Arizona on vacation and we are at the Boyce Thompson Arboretum, which is a absolutely gorgeous park that I was highly recommended to go see by my mom. And so I am partaking of that. So you're gonna be seeing a few snippets of video throughout the day of just all the cool things that we're seeing here. So enjoy. This is something that you rarely see in the desert, a waterfall. So this is not a natural waterfall. This is actually, um, there's a uh, water storage tank that then uh, uses a solar powered pump to pump the water here in order to kind of feed this area. But it is such a nice soothing sound to hear water running in the desert. Just really, really sticks out. You could hear this waterfall from all around. We've been looking for it for quite a while and we finally found it. So Boyce Thompson Arboretum is kind of nestled in a valley, which creates some really impressive panoramas as you're looking around. It is just gorgeous. Very different from where I come from in Virginia, but yeah. Sometimes we need to kind of step out of our own little areas really get an appreciation for what we have when we see things so differently from what we have. All right, so this is a plant that is just swarming with butterflies. <laughs> There's so many of them. Oh, like move a branch then. <laughs> it looks almost like static. Yeah. Oh, interesting looking. So this is just a gorgeous view. We're on the far end of the park on one of the hiking trails and you can look down into the valley and just see how green it is down where the water is. It's so cool. So we're actually cutting our visit here short because uh, despite the tables and such that you see here at the Arboretum, there's no food service. Um, I don't know whether that's because of COVID or because just because that's how they have it set up but um there's nowhere to get food here and it's about 1 30 now and we're famished from walking all those trails so we're actually gonna have to leave um i'm kind of disappointed that we're gonna miss a part of the garden because i'm just too dang hungry but um yeah i told my um told my husband that if we come back in april we're gonna come back and, to this place and see it in April when everything's in bloom because I'm sure it'll be really fabulous there. It was a really fun visit. Uh, a lot of really cool desert plants from deserts all over the world. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna come out here, bring food. So that's my word of advice. So this here is the Lost Dog Wash Trail. Uh, we are in the Sonoran Desert, the northern edge of the Sonoran Desert on the southern edge of the McDowell Mountains, which are just right over here. This is a pretty easy trail. Eventually, if you walk all the way to the end of it, which we are not going to, you'll get an overlook of Frank Lloyd Wright's Taliesin, which is pretty cool. So obviously the giant saguaro is the plant that primarily draws your eye. Well, there's something calling out there. That's a quail. Oh, quail. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, there's a lot of little right wildlife there. there. <laughs> so yes, giant saguaro. There's also prickly pears out there. There's choya. Um, this one right here, that's the ocotillo. And then my favorite actually is the Palo Verde tree, which is right there. It's a very cool tree. Photosynthesizes in its trunk and um, the bark is actually green. So it's really cool. All right, where are these quail? So this is a close-up of the Palo Verde and you can just barely see the teeny tiny little leaves but you can also very clearly see the green stalks and stems. Photosynthesizes the whole length of the plant in order to um, not have to have those big leaves that lose moisture, which is a super cool adaptation. All right, so this is gonna be our last hike out here. We are about to endeavor on the Blue Wash Trail. It's a 2.8 miles trail. Um, 
realized my hand is in the shot. There we go. Uh, 1.4 miles in and then 1.4 miles out at the end of it supposedly culminates in a waterfall. So if we're lucky, maybe we'll get to see it. I don't know. Depends on, I don't know if we're here in the right time of year, but we are in the Tonto National Forest. You can see it behind me. Just grand vista of open desert and mountains. So uh, let's hope that we survive. So we're about maybe a half mile in to the trail, the Blue Wash Trail, and we encountered an old car that apparently just went off the cliff and has been here ever since. That's not creepy at all, no. All right, so we are at the major fork here in the road. As you can see, this is Camp Creek, or what should be Camp Creek when there was water there. Um, where we just came from over this way is the Blue Wash. So we basically walked about a mile down that whole wash and somebody was very kind and left a nice little pointer to let us know which way to go. Isn't that cool? I love trail etiquette. It's the best. So this is kind of the final stretch here in the Camp Creek Wash. You can kind of get an idea of what the hike is like here. It is wide open gravel, no shade, so wear sunscreen. Even though it's only a high of about 77 today, I still got quite hot and had to put on my cooling towel, which is something I highly recommend for those of you who are not acclimated to heat. If you want to come out to Arizona, it's been a lifesaver for me. But still, pretty cool scenery. We're literally down in the wash. Everywhere you want to look, you have to look up to see everything. We've seen quite a few lizards. Nothing much else besides that. I've heard rumors that there's a Gila monster on the trail, but I haven't seen it yet, so don't know whether we'll see it or not. This is something you don't see every day, water in the desert. This is the stream that's coming from the waterfall, so we're just gonna follow this stream back up to where it comes from in that direction. Here's another telltale sign that you've encountered water in the desert. That is a cottonwood tree. If you see a cottonwood tree in the desert, you know there's water nearby. There it is. There it is, the waterfall at the end of the hike. It's very cool. So here's a better view of the waterfall from the side. You can actually see the full extent of the falls. It's not terribly tall, it's maybe about 10 feet, but still. It's a pretty impressive waterfall, particularly here in the desert in October. <laughs> Not a whole lot of water usually found in here. You can see my kids are looking for cool rocks. Because if you're going to look for rocks, then this is a good place to do it. So this is a cool view. We actually climbed up to the top of the waterfall so you can see the stream there. That's where the waterfall goes over. And then that little area down there, there's a couple of hikers making their way out. That is the trail that we're going to take out. So it's about 1.4 miles to come in here. So we got uh, 1.4 miles to go out. Unfortunately, a lot of our way out is going to be uphill, so that's going to be a struggle. Hey, so we survived. We did manage to complete that hike. The end was brutal. Um, the hike absolutely destroyed my boots. You can see I had to shower. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was rough getting out of there, but it was a super fun hike. Um, definitely challenging for someone who's not in the best shape like myself, but uh, it was definitely worth doing. Um, this is actually our last day here in Arizona. Um, my kids thought it would be funny for me to just like end the video with us like leaving the question as to whether we survived or not, but I was like, it doesn't seem right because if we post the video, people are obviously going to know. I apologize for the traffic noise. Um, people in Phoenix drive like fucking maniacs. I'm like, mm. so I thought we had bad drivers in Richmond, but god damn, y'all. So, anyway, I do enjoy coming out here to Arizona. It's a very different climate um, from what I'm used to, but, um, you know, everywhere you go, the energy's different, a little bit different depending on what the surroundings are like, and the overarching lesson that I always get from being out here is one of resilience you know that I mean the, the climate here is so damn harsh and these plants go through extreme lengths 
to be able to thrive and flourish despite that. And I think that that's a really interesting lesson that we can also partake of that, you know, sometimes you need to adapt a little bit, but you can flourish too. You just need to find the right combination. So anyway, that's the message I'm going to end this little video on. And as always, I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you again soon.